So if you tuned in last time, you saw that I built a gauze meter based on an Arduino microcontroller. So the problem now is that uh, I've removed the chip so I could breadboard the last project. So now I have this development board here and uh, there's no chip in it anymore. So what am I going to do? So what I've done is I've gone on eBay and I purchased some new 328P Atmel chips. Now the problem is though is that these Atmel chips are just Atmel chips. That's the difference between an Arduino and an Atmel. So all Arduinos are Atmels, but not all Atmels are Arduinos. We need to reinstall the bootloader on here so that we can use it on this board again. And what the bootloader does is lets us use some of the stuff on here so that we can use just a USB port to connect to it. So without the bootloader on there, the chip doesn't know how to operate. So normally if you were going to program this chip using something else, you would use something like this. This is a cheapy in-circuit serial programmer. So this was 20 bucks off of eBay. You can build one out of another Arduino if you want, but uh, I thought I'd be better off having this laying around. And it comes in a case and it's cute and uh, I like it. So it won't get damaged and it's dedicated use. So most microcontrollers would use something like this to program it. Even uh, if you were to use a microchip, I have here actually just sitting here ready. I have a PIC Kit 3 for programming the microchip versions. So buying this is good because we can replace the bootloader on the Arduino or we can program different styles of Atmel chips, which I actually just did an AT Tiny 45 the other day. But I'm going to take one of these chips and I'm going to mount it in here and I'll be right back. Here's the chip now inserted in the board. So something to pay attention to here is the notch and that little dot. So it's a pin one, so you got to make sure you don't put this thing in backwards. And one thing I don't like, and uh, none of my boards have it, pin one's not marked on this uh, ICSP header. So be careful, get a pin out if you need. So here's the programmer. And push that on there. That's good. We'll plug this part into the USB. And you can see it's getting powered. It's powered through this uh, programmer. And what I'm going to do now is we'll go over to the computer here. And you can see here tools, board. Under board, I've selected Uno because that's the, what it is, but you could have something else. Serial port, that's not important because we're not using it. And here, USB Tiny ISP. So, all I have to do after selecting those is click on this burn bootloader. And this takes a second, but you can see here this light's blinking while it's writing. This went red to let you know that it's running. And uh, this is kind of a long process here. But, uh, yeah, we're burning the bootloader. I just trimmed the time up there so you didn't have to wait the whole time, but it is now finished. Now, another nice thing about this is that uh, we could go ahead and use the USB now, or what we could do is go back to this thing, and uh, let's just open up an example. Let's put on blink. File, and... Upload using Programmer. Let's do that. There we go. The blink, the blink program went on, so that was really quick, too. So once you have this thing working, you don't actually have to use the USB anymore, either. You can use this, or use the USB. But anyway, the main thing is that we put the bootloader on. So we've now uh, replaced this chip, and now we're uh, back to where we started. So. We can do all kinds of projects now. So the downside to this though is that looked really easy, didn't it? But the problem with this was under Linux, you have to give the programmer permission to be able to talk. So there's some Linux command line stuff you're going to have to do. You're going to have to create a file that holds the permission. And you're also going to have to download the AVR GCC toolchain. I might try to find some links and I'll, uh, I'll put it up under my blog along with this video. So I'll link to my blog below this and on the blog I'll link to the other stuff. On Windows, this is a little bit easier. On Windows you can actually just get the ISP, uh, the USB Tiny ISP driver and it's signed. So if you're running Windows 7 or 8, you're not going to have to fight with it that hard. 
and once you have that driver on you plug in your USB and uh, it'll go from there so yeah I'll have instructions for that so on Windows this is a little bit easier to do but the process I used for burning the bootloader will be the same so yeah great and uh, hopefully this helped and uh, happy coding <laughs>